Hello and welcome. We're coming direct to you from Erbil, that's in Iraqi Kurdistan, to update you on all the developments from Ground Zero. Now, what NDTV has obtained is the first pictures of the trauma and the agony that the nurses, who are now back home with their families, went through. These pictures provided to us by the nurses who took them on their cell phones of smoke billowing from nearby. This is when the, there was fighting between the Iraqi forces who were trying to regain Tikrit as uh, well as the Islamic State militants. Uh, you, we can see smoke billowing from a building nearby. These pictures provided to us by a nurse, Marina Jose, who is now back with her family in Kotem in uh, Kerala. Also, the other developments, of course, are that the Islamic State is uh, still trying to keep the hold that they have maintained over Tikrit while Iraqi forces are trying to regain it. Tikrit, the hometown of former Iraqi President Saddam Hussein has been the scene of battles for over one week. And you can just imagine from those pictures that we're showing you, and we will get you some video as well of what was happening when the nurses were stuck, were stranded there while this crossfire was going on. The nurses and uh, at least over 200 Indians have gone back now. They've reached home. That evacuation procedure is continuing. It's not just the nurses who were in trouble when they were taken up from Tikrit to Mosul and uh, then brought to freedom here in Kurdistan and flown back home. But other workers as well who have other problems, they have been issued documents by the government of India if they didn't have, for example, their passports or any travel documents. The government also paying for the cost of their flight back home. But about the nurses, it's uh, now time after the media gaze shifts away from them to think about their future and what it holds. Sumi Jose had planned to extend her stay in Iraq for another year until she and 45 other Indian staff at the hospital in Tikrit were held hostage by militants last week. A clean place to stay, free food and an eight-hour shift at work. The contract job of the 26-year-old nurse in Iraq helped her save some money in the last nine months to pay back the loan of two lakh rupees her farmer father took for higher education of Sumi and her two siblings. I want to help my father and family out. So I want to work, I want to get proper job only. I don't want to stay and if I am getting now, somebody is helping for money and all. Sumi's first job at a private hospital in India paid 10,000 rupees. Her salary in Iraq began at 40,000 rupees. Joe's Thomas, Sumi's father, grows rubber back home in Puttankurashi near Ernakulam. He has suffered losses after the price of rubber fell in the market from 265 rupees a kg two years ago to 140 rupees a kg now. <laughs> Each year, close to 10,000 nursing students graduate in Kerala. Many brave a risk for more pay and travel abroad, even to conflict zones. Government had a bit of a lot a diploma course in nursing in a reputed college in India costs about 3 lakh rupees on an average. But it is seen as a sector by many young women in Kerala that guarantees a job. A job in an Indian company, which is a big private hospital perhaps, doesn't pay more than 15,000 rupees of salary per month. And agencies which fetch these young girls jobs abroad, especially in the Gulf and different conflict zones around India, does charge a lump sum amount. So, while the nurses say they are back, they are back without jobs and are staring at an uncertain future. In Puttankuruji, in central Kerala with SP Babu, Radhika Ayer, NDTV. And NDTV has obtained through one of those nurses, Marina Joes, the first pictures of what was happening at that Tikrit hospital. We saw pictures from, uh, of smoke billowing from a nearby building. We also have video that we are playing that the nurses took while they were caught in that crossfire. There's a still picture of, that we have also obtained that you can see an I, Islamic State militant in the background. But this is uh, the video that the nurses took 
in Tikrit, in the hospital, before they travel to Mosul and to freedom back home. Marina Jos now joins us from all that. Marina, we've been speaking to you from India, we've been speaking to you here, and we met you in Erbil, but it must be extremely reassuring to be back home. Yeah, yeah. I'm very happy because I never thought that I will come back to India because, you know, last week and since one month what happened. And last week became very worse. When we lived to this place, we lived in India, we never thought it will happen. When we uh, went there, uh, since six months there was, I think, quite uh, normal. And there was no problem. But after six months, you know, and especially this last month, June started problem. Actually, June 13th, they started bombing and fighting each other. So, you know, uh, last week only happened uh, bomb blast and uh, the s situation became very worse. So, you know, the opposite party, the local government, the new government, they asked us to move from the hospital. Marina, we've seen those pictures of your children greeting you at the airport when you landed. What did they first say to you? Uh, my daughter, when she saw me, she was crying and uh, my son, uh, he was very happy and he was saying that he is dreaming that uh, he was sleeping with me and when he got up in the morning, I was not with him, so he was worried. Now he's telling, no need to dream, now you are with me, now I can hug and sleep with me, with you. And you've all been extremely brave. You took pictures there, which you have uh, given to us in our playing currently of what happened there in Tikrit. Yeah, yeah. It was really difficult situation. Uh, all the old government and the management officials, everyone left us uh, alone in the hospital. And we were so worried. Uh, we can't do our uh, daily work even. We stop our day duty and we are not used to go for duty. The local people also not coming. So we also stopped the duty because there is no patient, no doctors, no staff, only Indian staff remained there. So we also uh, didn't go because we know the local people, I mean, you know, the local government, the new government, they are, the, the hospital was under their control. So we also bit afraid to go to for our uh, normal duty. What, one can... Marina, one can only imagine what you went through there and we promise as a media to try and be as unobtrusive as possible. But have you thought of what next? Will you ever come back to Iraq? Uh, I didn't decide it yet. Uh, the government is offering uh, job opportunities for all the 46 nurses. So we will see uh, many uh, agencies, they are also offering the job opportunities. So we will wait uh, and we will discuss with them about our salary. Uh, so you know, many, many of them uh, having some financial problem, study loan. We will see who is giving the better opportunity. We will choose that one. And if it is not okay, we will see what ourselves we can do or own. Right, Marina, you say take care there and uh, we hope you can spend now time with your family and decide uh, what next, a new life as you said. But it's not just the nurses, 39 Indian construction workers still held captive in Mosul and the other workers who continue to be evacuated, the ministry says the number of people who want to get out are getting less. That means at least 1,200, they say, will be back by Monday. They have other issues. It was an escape from the jaws of death for these workers who were rescued from Iraq and brought to the safety of home to Hyderabad. But there was no smile, no cheer. 28-year-old Prasad says there had been firing in the factory where they worked, but going home was not an option. They were virtually captive as their passports were with the factory officials. <laughs> Twenty-five year old Maruti says they were literally trapped and enslaved. They had been promised thirty-five thousand rupees per month, but got only about twenty thousand rupees, and for the last three months there was no pay at all. हम बोला वो company manager से सार हमको इधर से निकाल दो हमको visa भी expire हो गया हाँ हमको ticket लग ticket दे के फिर exit लगा के हमको भेज दो हमको वो काम कितना दिन के उतने दिन का पैसा दे 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 के भेजना अनुसार ऐसा बोलता है तो हम 
हम आपको नहीं बुलाया नहीं हम हमारे पास तुम क्यों आया ऐसा ही चले जाओ मेरा मेरे पास काम किया वो पैसा भी नहीं कुछ भी नहीं लक्ष्मण सेस द एजेंट हैड प्रॉमिस्ड वर्क फॉर टू इयर्स ओनली आफ्टर पेइंग वन एंड हाफ लाख रुपीस एंड अराइविंग इन इराक सिक्स मंथ्स अगो ही रियलाइज ही हैड बीन ब्रॉट ऑन अ टूरिस्ट वीजा लक्ष्मण हैज टू डॉटर्स लोन्स एंड वरी अबाउट देयर फ्यूचर फोर्स्ड हिम टू स्टे ऑन परिस्थिति दारणा हो गई कि इंटी कोई ना का यंदरो इज्जत सरो ये मो ये परेशान हो गई मंदु दागी जा चुड़ाई थे लास्ट वर अंदर धारणा The prospect of facing debtors is daunting. Yelaya in fact broke down on arrival at Hyderabad airport. He has over three lakh rupees to repay and nothing to fall back on. No land, no job, and there are four mouths to feed. If only he could have worked a few months and earned some money. He could have repaid some of that. Andra kandra jaache baal ne okon jaache ni poha puga tha. Andra kandra meh ke jaachori puru head kalu me yenge te der te aavi. Ya na karam bhoomun na dhan karda ammi. Ante itta naya ra ra ante ka ita baal meh te karna kani ka man government aad ko nutla ita door maachi na yenge isna man government te yeh man naga ani ka saathya. Mamun nae the government u badki chindi badki chindi ka baati i apu dara ko danga yeh dhanokar yeshi maag saayam je aalega. Yeh mamun ni ita dooram de chiru kada akkanu je. थ्रूस and registration and database should be maintained with the coordination of the state government the workers are telling us that in their own factory there are at least 50 more people waiting to get back home but even for those who have returned to safety there are still big challenges awaiting them back home the loans that they have to repay what will happen next in hyderabad with camera person vadnala seshasai uma sudhir ndtv But there are two sides to every coin. Here's Himanshu Sasrabode about how Kurdistan is different from Iraq. Iraq, as such, is uh, not Kurdistan, and Kurdistan is not Iraq. You know, we have to get that thing uh, clear first. Like Kurdistan, I have been here now two and a half years. I have not faced any issues whatsoever in terms of security, in terms of uh, you know, even my daily comforts. There is, though, a problem with certain kinds of uh, Indian workers, whether it comes to contractual labour or documentary problems. Ah, uh, yes, but I don't think that that uh, that problem is specific to Kurdistan or Iraq. I think uh, we, as Indians, we need to start educating our labour force when they go abroad. What kind of uh, safeguards they need to take? Their financial needs probably overcome all what what you're saying, which is logical. But the need to Fund their own families back home is probably what's driving them to come here and and, and fall into this trap. Um, I understand. I understand what you are saying. Uh, however, when I look at some other uh, other nationalities who are who are uh, here as well, like the Filipinos, for example, I find them much more savvy than the Indians. Uh, you know, in in terms of their outlook towards work. So I think that that sort of uh, street smartness need to be inculcated with the Indian workforce that is coming outside India. Well, the ministry is saying that uh, possibly up to 2,200 people would have been evacuated after the whole process is over. Also saying that phone calls for help are tapering off, means that most of the people who want to get out of Iraq have. Relieved to be back home safe, the smiles are back, at least for now. They are among 200 Indians who returned early this morning on a special flight from Iraq. Working as labourers in Najaf, close to Baghdad, they were spared the ISIS onslaught, though the threat was never far. Two months ago, you were in Mosul. I was 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 in Mosul. For many, like 25-year-old Jagroop Singh from Punjab, who lost his father a few years ago, Iraq was a way of pulling the family out of hard times. He went there last year to work as a construction labourer for 25,000 rupees a month, but for that he had to pay nearly two lakh rupees to the agent, a sum he managed with great difficulty through piecemeal loans. And homecoming was possible only after he agreed to let go his three-month salary to get back his passport. that was taken away by his employer
बोले अगर सैलरी लेना है काम करो इधर हालात तो बहुत सही है ऐसे बोल रहे थे कंपनी वाले हमारे को तो मालूम ही था गोलीबारी चलता रहता था बम भी विस्फोट हुए हमारे पास में ही हुए हम लोग तो निकल आए जो बाकी है उनका बहुत मुश्किल है It's a similar story for Pramod Kumar, who's now more worried about his younger brother, who couldn't catch the same flight back home. शायद वो आ जाएगा। देखो उसने फोन तो किया नहीं है। ना वहाँ पे नेट चल रहे हैं, ना सिम वर्ष सब सब कुछ बंद कर दिया गया है। The homecoming is just the first step. They still face a mountain of challenges to secure their financial future, but for now, they're simply relieved to return alive. सैलरी छोड़ दिया हमको। हमको तो हमको जिंदगी सैलरी अच्छी है क्या हमको जिंदगी मिलेगी अब ठीक है मैडम हमको और कुछ नहीं चाहिए बस हमको धन्यवाद है हमारी गवर्नमेंट का करते हैं हम इन न्यू डेली विच शशिकांत झा केत की आमरे फैंडी टीवी लेट्स जस्ट गिव यू एन आइडिया ऑफ द एंग्विश दैट द नर्सेस इन टिकरीट वर गोइंग थ्रू and ETV has obtained through Marina Joes, one of the nurses there, this video that they took on their cell phones when they were caught in the crossfire in the teaching hospital in Baghdad. Right? Those were, of course, from the Tikrit hospital. They're the first pictures that you're seeing of what really happened. Well, NET will continue to report from on the ground. We'll tell you what's happening here vis-a-vis -vis the Islamic State and why the region, India and the world needs to worry. You're watching NDTV and we're coming to you direct from Erbil in Iraqi Kurdistan. Why is the world woken up to the Islamic State threat? Looking at the areas that it controls, marked in red across Syria, the north and the east, and the north and the west of Iraq, the Iraqi government and the Syrian government controls lands that are marked in blue. And in green up in north, the Peshmerga of the Kurdish army are keeping the Islamic State away from that area. The lightning moves that the Islamic State made from Raqqa, their self-proclaimed capital in Syria, across the border to Mosul, moving down right with the Tigris River to the doorstep of Baghdad within two days, Baiji, the oil refinery, Tikrit, which is still contested, and Bakuba. Going back now in history to the sykes pico line, which was created after World War I, when the British and the French reached an agreement to carve out these areas, Iraq and Syria were not states then. The, the Russians were also involved in that agreement. Now what the so-called self-proclaimed caliphate is now saying is that they are erasing that border between Syria and Iraq. Another big concern here is of uh, the sectarian violence and the causes for all the tension and the crisis currently, the Shias, the Sunnis and the Kurds. The Kurds are also Sunnis, but they see themselves as non-Arab. The Sunnis are about 18% of Iraq, the Shias about 55%. They are a majority and that's a problem with the Shia Prime Minister disregarding the rest and the Kurds in the north about 18%. A huge human cost in this, the UN has said that June has been the most deadliest in terms of civilians killed, also internally displaced people. At the last count, the United Nations was saying that at least 2 million people who are displaced within Iraq, they also include 1 million who were displaced because of the Syrian crisis. That is expected to go up and you can see in Mosul where people have fled estimated, these are estimates that are expected to go up about 500,000 who have fled from Mosul trying to get to Kurdistan which is a safe area but they can't unless they have a sponsorship from the government of Kurdistan or else from the people of Kurdistan. So the camps set up outside the border of Kurdistan are where many of these people are. So who is this mysterious self-proclaimed caliph? Caliph Ismail, he calls himself. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi has a $10 million reward by the U.S. Department of Justice on him two years ago. That is bound to go up now. Well, he had only one audio recording and two still photographs that uh, you could find anywhere, including with the U.S. government. But now on Friday, he has apparently led prayers at a mosque in Mosul. And these are pictures that have been sent out by the Islamic State media wing, Al Hayat, where he led those prayers on Friday. The U.S., of course, is present here, at least 700 observers who are looking at uh, intelligence, reconnaissance and surveillance, but they do have manned and unmanned drones and aircraft. And uh, with him being so blatantly arrogant as to appear in Mosul, which is just about 80 kilometers from here, the question is, will the Americans use their aircraft to target him or the Islamic State? 
Dr. Khalid Saleh is a key advisor to the Prime Minister of Kurdistan. He's also been responsible for the constitution of Iraq post the war. He's the Vice Chancellor of the Kurdistan University. And he told us that he thinks the Caliphate is trying to set up fear both in the area and across the world. And they could do that across the region. He also said India needs to stop looking at Iraq just through the prism of Baghdad. I think it is a fear, but it's not a fear not in the sense that all the, all the states will collapse at the same time and they will create that within 24 hours. What will happen is a destabilization, a destabilizing element they can inject with fear but also with recruitment and make sure that some of those countries are paying one way or another some price for not joining their forces. For example, a couple of explosions in Jordan will create a lot of fear in Lebanon, it will create another round of internal uh, fighting among different groups. And also in Saudi Arabia, you have also some fear, as, as they have been indicating, they also target those areas systematically. But my worry will be also Turkey, because if Kurdistan is not safe and secure, the Turkish border will also be in trouble. India has a wrong relationship with Baghdad, but now the time has come to look at Iraq in a diversity way, in a, in a diverse way. For example, doing investment particularly relevant for Kurdistan will help Indian companies also to establish themselves here in a way that are not possible, for example, in Baghdad or Basra at the moment. Once Indian companies have established their network, their system and their, their offices here, and once uh, uh, improvement of life has to come to the rest of Iraq, Indian companies will be able to use Kurdistan as a as a springboard for the rest of Iraq as a market. NDTV will continue to report on the crisis in Iraq, on the evacuation of Indian nationals and the repercussions for the region and the world.